Welcome back students to our chapter 3 chemistry 1510 video notes. Uh, we are going to start today with percent composition. So when we start looking at chemical formulas, remember that they always um, would have the same ratio. So if we looked at something like uh, water, you would have two hydrogens to one oxygen. Well, they not only have the same ratio with respect to the total numerical value of hydrogens to oxygens, they can also have the same uh, kind of percentage by mass. And so we're not going to really know why this is important to calculate yet. So first let's focus on how to calculate percent composition, and then we can come back to why we're doing this. So when we are trying to figure out uh, if we've made a compound that we think uh, we have made, we do this process where we have the mass of the sample and we can do some wild chemistry that we'll talk about a little bit later and get the uh, individual components of that sample. And then we can do a, a percent out of that. So in all percentages, remember that no matter what, your percentage is always a part out of a whole. And because it's a percent, we multiply by 100. And so in this case, we have three different parts. We have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen. And then our whole is the mass of the sample. And so we'll just start with carbon. So we'll take our carbon and we will put the number of grams of carbon that are given and divide that by the mass of the sample and then multiply that by 100. So when this happens, we should get about 60.26% carbon. And let's keep going with this process. Let's do hydrogen next. So if we do hydrogen next, we'll take the mass of the hydrogen and we will divide that by the mass of the sample. Right, so the whole is the mass of the entire sample and then the part it changes right first we talked about hydrogen i'm sorry carbon and now we have a percentage of hydrogen so those of you who are mathematically inclined probably see that you can finish up this problem two different ways i'm going to do the longer route and i'm going to do the longer route uh, meaning that i'm going to take the mass of the oxygen that i'm given and I am going to divide by the mass of the sample and get the percentage. So when you go through this process, the reason that I want to take the longer route, which is do going through the calculation for this last one, instead of the shorter route, which would be to add these up, right, and those, and then subtract uh, those from 100. So I'd subtract, here, I'm going to sneak back really quick and show what I'm doing with more work, right, and do that subtraction is because if I go the longer route and actually calculate this for oxygen, it allows me to do a double check. What I mean by that is you know that these three numbers should add up to about 100%. And so if we do indeed add up those values, in this particular case, all three of these added, so if we take all three of these and we total them, that is going to get us 99.99%. That's pretty darn close to 100. We're happy with that. So this way we can catch a math error while we're doing a question like this on an exam instead of doing the kind of faster way, which then you don't have an opportunity to catch your math error. So let's look at another type of this problem that's just a little bit different in its format. So I'm going to scroll down to... Uh, a different way to write this problem. So notice how in this one it says calculate the theoretical percentages. 
So before in that first problem, what we were doing was we had real data and we were calculating the percentages based upon the data that was provided. And this route, we're gonna go a little bit differently. What we'll do is we'll assume that we have a one mole sample. And that way, if we assume that we have a one mole sample, the molar mass of N2O5 ends up being the sample mass. And then what we need to do is calculate how much nitrogen is in N2O5 by mass and how much oxygen. So let's do that kind of the long way by showing all of our work. So by the time you take the exam, you probably will be uh, able to do a lot of this either in your head or um, just really quick in your calculator. So this part that I'm doing here, where I'm gonna take my 14.01 grams of nitrogen and multiply it by my two moles of nitrogen, this part you could probably end up doing in your head by the time you take the exam. And then for the oxygen, your N2O5 says you have five moles of oxygen within your N2O5. And so your one mole of oxygen has a mass of six grams. And remember, for those of you who are curious about why, oops, I'm off by a decimal place, um, why we aren't uh, using a diatomic oxygen and nitrogen here is because oxygen and nitrogen are diatomic only when they're not paired with another element. So as soon as they're in a compound, you just use that singular uh, value off of the periodic table. So now that we've kind of done our background work, let's get down to answering the question. So remember that in our question, our percentages were always a part over a whole. So for your nitrogen, your part is the 28.02 grams of nitrogen that you have in your one mole sample. And so down here at the bottom, we need to have a mass of the sample. Well, if your sample is one mole, then you need to put in the molar mass of the sample, which just so happens to be these two numbers added together. So the molar mass of our sample is going to be 108.02 grams of our sample. And then we'll multiply that by 100. Then I'm also going to do the long way here because I prefer that way. I'm going to take my 80 grams of oxygen, divide it by the mass of my sample, and then multiply it by 100. So the reason that we want to be able to go both directions with our percent uh, by masses. And when I say both directions, I mean the first problem where we were given data and here the second problem where we're given just the chemical formula is because if you were given data and the data said that you had, uh, you know, 25% nitrogen like you do here and 74% oxygen like you do here, and then you went through that calculation of uh, your theoretical percent of your N2O5 and your percentages matched, you would then know that it's very likely that you made the compound that you wanted to make, which is really important in chemistry. So what we'll do in the next section is talk about where that data comes from. And it's pretty complex, so I'm actually going to uh, make its own video. So we're going to pause here for right now, and we'll come back in another video where we'll cover combustion analysis. Thank you so much for your attention. Katoni, signing out.